Do you make melodies? Yeah. Do you export them with nothing but a soft clip on the master? Then you're watching the right video, because in today's video, I will show you how to master your melodies to turn them from this into this. Or from this into this. So I'm just gonna show y'all how I master my melodies on a few examples. First off, we got this kind of dreamy Virgilia type loop. It's pretty quiet, but you know, we can obviously fix that with the mastering. Nine out of 10 times I export the melody before I master it because of CPU reasons. But when I export it, I sometimes like to leave the drum master on. I got on my template. If you haven't watched my video on my drum master yet, make sure to check that out. It's probably here or here right now. But yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Just this EQ. I turn it way down though if I export it with the melody. Classic Clipper and Go Foss, which I also turn way down and set this range to 130. So it's not affecting anything below 130. Alt R. Ooh. And now after the melody rendered out, I'm just gonna mute everything else. T for mute. And then we finally start mastering. So I usually use two different mastering chains. So for this one, I'm using my more extreme kind of mastering preset cause the melody lacks a little bit of energy and the loop is a little lower volume. You know, if I have a melody that already sounds really good and doesn't need much mastering, I use my other mastering preset. First of all, we have the cassette. You could automate the static knob a little bit. Just, you know, move it around, click on tools, last tweaked, and then create automation clip. Then we got a little reverb called illusion if y'all watch my top five reverb video y'all know this already this is the preset i use right here start with having it all the way on i usually turn ozone off till i get to it and then turn it down till it kind of feels right so for this one we're doing a little more like about 20 percent because the melody is already very dreamy you know and very spacious and there's no bass so then we got the most important part of the mastering chain which is ozone so first we're using vintage comp which i normally turn way down then we got a little eq going on which i also turn down to like about you know it depends you know between like i would say two and four probably and then get the maximizer which i also turn down depending on how loud the melody is this melody is kind of low so then we got Soothe, which a lot of y'all probably know. It used to be like a kind of like a secret plugin, but now everybody knows about it. I used the preset less mod on the master, and normally I click these two and then kind of like search for frequencies that aren't really nice. Usually I cut around one or two K. I can't really explain how I use this plugin. I just, you know, dread now up very slow it is still it kind of sound good to me. You know, but it should kind of take out bad frequencies. I'm kind of clean up the whole melody a little bit. And yeah, at last, we got another plugin some of y'all might know through my videos. I showed it in the first top 5 effects plugins video. Gives it a little bit more wideness, a little bit more warmth. Let's compare it before and after. definitely makes a difference but let's get straight to the next example melody is already sounding clean you know it doesn't really need too much if anything and you know i found what sometimes works too although it sounds odd it's just applying the same preset again. It already got exported with this preset on. So EQ, Clipper, 
and go forth. But if I just reapply it again after exporting, which sometimes really does a wonderful job at just making it a little more full and just giving it exactly what it needs without doing too much. So you don't gotta overcomplicate shit. Just if it works, it works. So yeah, let's move straight to the next one. All right, so I'm gonna break down the last mastering chain. I use this master when the melody sounds great already. And it just needs a little bit refinement, you know, a little bit, a little bit of brightness. Just a little bit of sound from them to make it kind of stand out a bit more. First, we got this DAW LP, which is at 1%. It just adds a little bit of, you know, vintage tone. Then we got a spin, same kind of purpose. If I would turn it up, it adds a wobbly kind of vintage feeling. Then we got an EQ. So if the melody doesn't have a bass in it, I cut around, I would say like 80 hertz to 120 hertz. If the melody has a bass, I just, you know, kind of roll off at the end. And then the most important part of this mastering chain, this is a mastering equalizer. It's called Chandler Limited Curve Bender by Softube. Basically, I just click through presets right here. Though. I like acoustic shimmer, pop piano sounds good too, basic mastering is cool too, and this pop preset down here is also great. I end up tweaking every single EQ at the end of the day anyway, so, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory. You just got these four um, bands right here, which you can select the hertz off. So, for example, on this lower band right here, we boost in a bit of 91 hertz, you know, and obviously this is an analog modeled EQ, so it's not finna do the same thing as boosting 91 hertz right here. It's finna have its analog modeling thing going on in the background that just EQs it in a different way, you know. On this next band, do nothing right here. 4.2 hertz, also 0.5 dB boost. We can boost this even more. It really brings out that brightness. What I really like about this equalizer is, you know, you can still get away with boosting a lot. And for this band, um, see if I find like a frequency I don't like. So I just put this at 5. It doesn't need anything. But if you find something in that frequency range that is really annoying, just lower it. And then 10,000 hertz. Again, we boost in. And you know, that equalizer just gives it a little bit more brightness, a little bit more fullness, and a little bit more refinement. Yeah, then next to last, we got an ozone imager. So I use this differently depending on if I have a bass in the melody or not. If I don't have a bass in the melody, I completely make everything below like 140 Hz mono, as you can see right here. If there is no bass in the melody, as I said, I'm finna cut at around 80 to 120 Hz in this equalizer before, but then fully boost this. I don't know, it kind of gives it a warmness. I don't know, maybe. Really, the most important thing right here is those two bands, which are just boost a little bit. You now, you can boost them a little more, it just gives it a little bit more wideness especially in the high end. And then last is this, it says stereo amplifier. I just use it for volume. I got this a long time ago, so I don't know if it's still available, but this was free like a few years ago when I got this. So as you can hear, if I boost it all the way, it kind of gives it that noise too. It takes a lot of CPU, but you know, just boosting around 5 to 1 dB just to make it a little louder but yeah that's it for the video hope y'all enjoyed this one leave a comment on what videos y'all want next like subscribe and turn on notifications if y'all learned something from this video which I'm sure y'all have a like Come on, y'all already know that really helps push these videos so people want to see them. So, you know, just leave a quick comment, like the video, you know what I'm saying? And we like this. You know what I'm saying? Other than that, check out my kits. First thing in the description. Sweet. I'm out.